This is section three of the complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. Advice to a daughter. House, family, and children. You must lay before you, my dear, there are degrees of care to recommend yourself to the world in the several parts of your life. In many things, though the doing them well may raise your credit and esteem, yet the omission of them would draw no immediate reproach upon you. In others, where your duty is more particularly applied, the neglect of them is amongst those faults which are not forgiven and will bring you under a censure which will be a much heavier thing than the trouble you would avoid of this kind is the government of your house family and children which since it is the province allotted to your sex and that the discharging it well will for that reason be expected from you if you either desert it out of laziness or manage it ill for want of skill instead of a help you will be an encumbrance to the family where you are placed i must tell you that no respect is lasting but that which is produced by our being in some degree useful to those that pay it where that faileth the homage and the reverence go along with it and fly to others where something may be expected in exchange for them and upon this principle the respects even of the children and the servants will not stay with one that doth not think them worth their care and the old housekeeper shall make a better figure in the family than the lady with all her fine clothes if she wilfully relinquishes her title to the government therefore take heed of carrying your good breeding to such a height as to be good for nothing and to be proud of it some think it hath a great air to be above troubling their thoughts with such ordinary things as their house and family others dare not admit cares for fear they should hasten wrinkles mistaken pride maketh some think they must keep themselves up and not descend to these duties which do not seem enough refined for great ladies to be employed in forgetting all this while that it is more than the greatest princes can do at once to preserve the respect and to neglect their business no age ever erected altars to insignificant gods they had all some quality applied to them to draw worship from mankind this maketh it the more unreasonable for a lady to expect to be considered and at the same time resolve not to deserve it good looks alone will not do they are not much a lasting tenure as to be relied upon and if they should stay longer than they usually do it will by no means be safe to depend upon them for when time hath abated the violence of the first liking and that the nap is a little worn off though still a good degree of kindness may remain men recover their sight which before might be dazzled and allow themselves to object as well as to admire in such a case when a husband seeth an empty airy thing sail up and down the house to no kind of purpose and look as if she came thither only to make a visit when he findeth that after her emptiness hath been extreme busy about some very senseless thing she eats her breakfast half an hour before dinner to be at greater liberty to afflict the company with her discourse then calleth for her coach that she may trouble her acquaintance who are already cloyed with her and having some proper dialogues ready to display her foolish eloquence at the top of the stairs she setteth out like a ship out of the harbour laden with trifles and cometh back with them at her return she repeateth to her faithful waiting woman the triumphs of that day's impertinence then wrapped up in flattery and clean linen goeth to bed so satisfied that it throweth her into pleasant dreams of her own felicity such a one is seldom serious but with her tailor her children and family may now and then have a random thought but she never taketh aim but at something very impertinent 
i say when a husband whose province is without doors and to whom the economy of the house would be in some degree indecent findeth no order nor quiet in his family meeteth with complaints of all kinds springing from this root the mistaken lady who thinketh to make amends for all this by having a well-chosen petticoat will at last be convinced of her error and by grief be forced to undergo the penalties that belong to those who are wilfully insignificant when this scurvy hour cometh upon her she first groweth angry then when the time of it is past would perhaps grow wiser not remembering that we can no more have wisdom than grace whenever we think fit to call for it there are times and periods fixed for both and when they are too long neglected the punishment is that they are irrecoverable and nothing remaineth but an useless grief for the folly of having thrown them out of our power you are to think what a mean figure a woman maketh when she is so degraded by her own fault whereas there is nothing in those duties which are expected from you that can be a lessening to you except your want of conduct makes it so you may love your children without living in the nursery and you may have a competent and discreet care of them without letting it break out upon the company or exposing yourself by turning your discourse that way which is a kind of laying children to the parish and it can hardly be done anywhere that those who hear it will be so forgiving as not to think they are overcharged with them a woman's tenderness to her children is one of the least deceitful evidences of her virtue but yet the way of expressing it must be subject to the rules of good breeding and though a woman of quality ought not to be less kind to them than mothers of the meanest rank are to theirs yet she may distinguish herself in the manner and avoid the coarse methods which in women of a lower size might be more excusable you must begin early to make them love you that they may obey you this mixture is nowhere more necessary than in children and i must tell you that you are not to expect returns of kindness from yours if ever you have any without grains of allowance and yet it is not so much a defect in their good nature as a shortness of thought in them their first insufficiency maketh them lean so entirely upon their parents for what is necessary that the habit of it maketh them continue the same expectations for what is unreasonable and as often as they are denied so often they think they are injured and whilst their desires are strong and their reasons yet in the cradle their anger looketh no farther than the thing they long for and cannot have and to be displeased for their own good is a maxim they are very slow to understand so that you may conclude the first thoughts of your children will have no small mixture of mutiny which being so natural you must not be angry except you would increase it you must deny them as seldom as you can and when there is no avoiding it you must do it gently you must flatter away their ill-humor and take the next opportunity of pleasing them in some other thing before they either ask or look for it this will strengthen your authority by making it soft to them and confirm their obedience by making it their interest you are to have as strict a guard upon yourself amongst your children as if you were amongst your enemies they are apt to make wrong inferences to take encouragement from half words and misapply what you may say or do so as either to lessen their duty or to extend their liberty farther than is convenient let them be more in awe of your kindness than of your power and above all take heed of supporting a favorite child in its impertinence which will give right to the rest of claiming the same privilege if you have a divided number leave the boys to the father's more peculiar care 
that you may with greater justice pretend to a more immediate jurisdiction over those of your own sex you are to live so with them that they may never choose to avoid you except when they have offended and then let them tremble that they may distinguish but their penance must not continue so long as to grow too sour upon their stomachs that it may not harden instead of correcting them the kind and severe part must have their several turns seasonably applied but your indulgence is to have the broader mixture that love rather than fear may be the root of their obedience your servants are in the next place to be considered and you must remember not to fall into the mistake of thinking that because they receive wages and are so much inferior to you therefore they are below your care to know how to manage them it would be as good reason for a master workman to despise the wheels of his engines because they are made of wood these are the wheels of your family and let your directions be never so faultless yet if these engines stop or move wrong the whole order of your house is either at a stand or discomposed besides the inequality which is between you must not make you forget that nature maketh no such distinction but that servants may be looked upon as humble friends and that returns of kindness and good usage are as much due to such of them as deserve it as their service is due to us when we require it a foolish haughtiness in the style of speaking or in the manner of commanding them is in itself very undecent besides that it begetteth an aversion in them of which the least ill effect to be expected is that they will be slow and careless in all that is enjoined them and you will find it true by your experience that you will be so much the more obeyed as you are less imperious be not too hasty in giving your orders nor too angry when they are not altogether observed much less are you to be loud and too much disturbed an evenness in distinguishing when they do well or ill is that which will make your family move by a rule and without noise and will the better set out your skill in conducting it with ease and silence that it may be like a well-disciplined army which knoweth how to anticipate the orders that are fit to be given them you are never to neglect the duty of the present hour to do another thing which though it may be better in itself is not to be unseasonably preferred a lot well chosen hours for the inspection of your family which may be so distinguished from the rest of your time that the necessary cares may come in their proper place without any influence upon your good humor or interruption to other things by these methods you will put yourself in possession of being valued by your servants and then their obedience will naturally follow i must not forget one of the greatest articles belonging to a family which is the expense it must not be such as by failing either in the time or measure of it may rather draw censure than gain applause if it was well examined there is more money given to be laughed at than for any one thing in the world though the purchasers do not think so a well-stated rule is like the line when that is once passed we are under another pole so the first straying from a rule is a step towards making that which was before a virtue to change its nature and to grow either into a vice or at least an impertinence the art of laying out money wisely is not attained to without a great deal of thought and it is yet more difficult in the case of a wife who is accountable to her husband for her mistakes in it it is not only his money his credit too is at stake if what lieth under the wife's care is managed either with indecent thrift or too loose profusion you are therefore to keep the mean between these two extremes and it being hardly possible to hold the balance exactly even let it rather incline towards the liberal side as more suitable to your quality 
and less subject to reproach of the two a little money misspent is sooner recovered than the credit which is lost by having it unhandsomely saved and a wise husband will less forgive a shameful piece of parsimony than a little extravagance if it be not too often repeated his mind in this must be your chief direction and his temper when once known will in great measure justify your part in the management if he is pleased with it in your clothes avoid too much gaudy do not value yourself upon an embroidered gown and remember that a reasonable word or an obliging look will gain you more respect than all your fine trappings this is not said to restrain you from a decent compliance with the world provided you take the wiser and not the foolisher part of your sex for your pattern some distinctions are to be allowed whilst they are well suited to your quality and fortune and in the distribution of the expense it seemeth to me that a full attendance and well-chosen ornaments for your house will make you a better figure than too much glittering in what you wear which may with more ease be imitated by those that are below you yet this must not tempt you to starve everything but your own apartment or in order to more abundance there give just cause to the least servant you have to complain of the want of what is necessary above all fix it in your thoughts as an unchangeable maxim that nothing is truly fine but what is fit and that just so much as is proper for your circumstances of their several kinds is much finer than all you can add to it when you once break through these bounds you launch into a wide sea of extravagance everything will become necessary because you have a mind to it and you have a mind to it not because it is fit for you but because somebody else hath it this lady's logic setteth reason upon its head by carrying the rule from things to persons and appealing from what is right to every fool that is in the wrong the word necessary is miserably applied it disordereth families and overturneth governments by being so abused remember that children and fools want everything because they want wit to distinguish and therefore there is no stronger evidence of a crazy understanding than the making too large a catalogue of things necessary when in truth there are so very few things that have a right to be placed in it try everything first in your judgment before you allow it a place in your desire else your husband may think it is as necessary for him to deny as it is for you to have whatever is unreasonable and if you shall too often give him that advantage the habit of refusing may perhaps reach to things that are not unfit for you there are unthinking ladies who do not enough consider how little their own figure agreeth with the fine things they are so proud of others when they have them will hardly allow them to be visible they cannot be seen without light and that is many times so saucy and so prying that like a too forward gallant it is to be forbid the chamber some when you are ushered into their dark ruelle it is with such solemnity that a man would swear there was something in it till the unskilful lady breaketh silence and beginneth a chat which discovereth it is a puppet play with magnificent scenes many esteem things rather as they are hard to be gotten than that they are worth getting this looketh as if they had an interest to pursue that maxim because a great part of their own value dependeth upon it truth in these cases would be often unmannerly and might derogate from the prerogative great ladies would assume to themselves of being distinct creatures from those of their sex which are inferior and of less difficult access in other things too your condition must give the rule to you and therefore it is not a wife's part to aim at more than a bounded liberality 
the farther extent of that quality otherwise to be commended belongeth to the husband who hath better means for it generosity wrong placed becometh a vice it is no more a virtue when it groweth into an inconvenience virtues must be enlarged or restrained according to differing circumstances a princely mind will undo a private family therefore things must be suited or else they will not deserve to be commended let them in themselves be never so valuable and the expectations of the world are best answered when we acquit ourselves in that manner which seemeth to be prescribed to our several conditions without usurping upon those duties which do not so particularly belong to us i will close the consideration of this article of expense with this short word do not fetter yourself with such a restraint in it as may make you remarkable but remember that virtue is the greatest ornament and good sense the best equipage end of house family and children